My name is Tommy Bilderback. I am the pastor of Vucre Baptist Church in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I'm from Whitesboro, Texas. Vucre Church, uh, I would say now in, in the French Quarter community, is kind of in a strange place because the French Quarter, of course, is um, known for uh, people that have a considerable amount of money, um, so you have a lot of money here. Um, and you have the polar opposite of that. You have people that have absolutely no money here. You have those two things going on. And in between that is kind of the Vucare Church, who in the midst of all of that, creates community and invites people into a family um, who have nothing. And we, we believe that that's what Jesus did. And in Luke 9, 15, he gave a great example of that, that Jesus ate, drank, and relaxed with notorious sinners, people that weren't inside the church walls, and he did that to create a kingdom. I believe it's, it is a, uh, it's a post of the kingdom of God um, in, in New Orleans. This, this property was titled the first time in 1722. Um, we have no idea what it was all those years, but in 1954, Vucare Baptist Church was a house church. It was on Bourbon Street, it was on Decatur Street. It bounced around the quarter until 1964 when a group of churches in town, um, several that I would name, no one would probably know, but uh, churches in town got together and decided to purchase this property for the people who were Vucare Church that were meeting in houses. And so they got the property in 1964. Well, of course, in any big urban city, when you have a lot of people gathered together, you, um, you sometimes can end up seeing the worst side of humanity. Um, you can see a lot of a lot of selfishness, a lot of hopelessness. You can see people seeking for hope and things far, far from from God. I've come to realize that, or, or for me at least, that as crazy as it sounds, hopelessness is really a good thing um, because it's only when a person gets to the end of their own hope, whatever hope they might have it in, whether it be themselves, their success, their fame, their fortune, their other people that until that hope is dissolved, until it's seen not to be able to hold up the weight um, of, a, of a human's hope, that person begins to search for hope. And, and so um, in a lot of ways I feel like we are right in the spot to, um, to walk alongside people and say, hey, there is another hope and, and it's a real hope. And then we have to model that hope. and, and be that hope for people, sometimes for seasons, until, um, until they're ready to turn and trust that hope. For every person that comes through the door, there's a different story. Um, there's this, it's like homelessness. For as many types of homelessness, there are, are reasons to be homeless. There, there are that many stories and that many needs or wants. And uh, that's the thing, about the time you think you've got figured out what people are coming after, you really, you really don't. And, and one of the biggest things um, for us is that you find out, and we're all learning this, is that um, it, it takes time. Jesus took time with people. It's as much us as it is them because we're all suffering from the same set of flesh and issues and dealing with all of our mess at the same time. And so we're seeing ourselves reflected in the people that we deal with. We're seeing Jesus and every one of these people that come in. And so, um, and then we all got our own stuff going on at the same time. We're trying to be this, this light post, this whatever you, whatever you call this. And so uh, there's that whole back set of us as a, as a group of just regular people like anybody else um, in, in this strange place doing this very strange thing. We are, we are first and foremost a community of people trying to love each other and, and love Jesus. And that, that looks in a lot of different ways. Um, one of the biggest things, of course, is um, we, we, we have a faith family. We have a core of people who are Christ followers and who are trying to live that out and all the things they're doing. Um, but because we're in this neighborhood and we are right in the smack in the middle of, of homelessness and millionaires, um, we provide a place on Fridays. We call it Shower Friday. It was a very endearing name. Where we do provide places for people to take a shower. Um, we have hygiene and clothes. 
we set up our sanctuary like a dining room and we invite people in. We really consider them our friends. And we cook a meal that we would love to eat. It's not a, not a soup line or any of those kind of things. And uh, we, we have two shifts. And we've gotten so popular we have two full shifts and we have to give out tickets because there's so many people that want to come and we, we just can't take them all because we're so small. And, and really and truly what that is, it's, it's not about feeding because we can't, we're not going to sustain somebody on one day a week or even one day of clothes and those kind of things, but we really look at it as a, we need an intentional place to build relationships. And it's hard to do that on street corners or at the end of a bullhorn or whatever the case may be. And so this, this is, we're inviting people in technically into our home. And so we invite anyone and everyone in, it doesn't matter. Um, and we have all kinds of people show up. And, uh, and we let everybody sit down and get in and we tell all our volunteers, we don't really need you shuffling plates and doing all that. We need, we need, you, to be, we need you to be present. You have to be hanging around. You have to be here. You, you can't just kind of drop in, do it for a weekend, and then leave. You have to be a part and know the names uh, to the extent that they let their names be known. Uh, you, you know, you have to uh, kind of understand um, what their lives are like and where the angles are because many times they're playing angles and games. And, and I've learned from those that come in that are good mission teams and mission leaders that. Uh, and from Tom, you've got to sometimes um, present incremental steps and hoops for um, people that are struggling out here on the streets to go through when they're expressing that they, they really are, they think that they're ready for, uh, to turn their lives and to, to go a different way. When I come in, the best thing about Shower Friday, the only thing that I feel adequate in is to give hugs <laughs> and to really love people and to really um, just remind them they're people <laughs> um, and that they're, I'm no different from them, they're no different, we're just in different situations but we're all made by the same God, the same Creator and, uh, and I think that's one of the draws to this church body and to Shower Fridays, um, to those that keep coming, is even if they're not ready to surrender to the Lord, they know there's a place where they can keep finding Him. I mean, it's, it's a relief to be accepted instead of rejected, to be loved instead of abandoned, you know? That's, that's a big thing. Everybody out there has been abandoned. Everybody out there has been trampled on, thrown away. You know, society says we're trash, we're garbage, but you have someone breathing life into you that says, you know what, you're not garbage. You're beautiful, you're, you're God's child. You're special, you're loved, you're welcomed. That's an amazing thing. I think they, they just see the difference Jesus makes and a lot of them understand it and they know when they hit bottom where they can go. I think that's, that's why we keep doing this every week. I'm not always content. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a struggle, but when you, when you have a foundation with Christ and you know who you are, that you're a son of the Most High, that you can't allow your circumstances to define you. You have to define your circumstances. You have to, you have to speak into those circumstances that, you know what, I'm not what you say I am. I'm something bigger than that. He says that he loves me. He came to die for me. You know, people were slaughtering. They were, they were stoning him and spitting at him and, and ridiculing him. But even while they were doing that, he was loving him, saying, I'm going to die for you so that you can have life. When you actually grasp that and know that the 91st song is how close he is to you and stays with you, then you have a contentment. You have a refuge, a place to go. The most high underneath his wing, you have that. That's your contentment.